Fratelloni's Hardware and Garden Stores brings you Garage Logic Podcast number 1,130, no, 1,133, oh. August 15th, 2023. 103 degrees was the high on this day. That was in 1936, and 47 degrees on this day in 1960. 1960 was just a bit prior to the creation of aquaside products that have been keeping swimming beaches free of weeds and unwanted crud for more than 60 years. They're a White Bear Lake company. The products are made in White Bear Lake. They're easy to use. They work quickly. They've been authorized by all of the authorizers. It's uh, <laughs> it's a fantastic product. I've used it. I've watched it work. And here's the beauty of it. It works. It keeps that swimming beach or swimming hole free of weeds and unwanted vegetation and algae. And the best thing to do is walk yourself down to the lake and have the kids point to what's bothering them. Then you call Aquaside, describe the problem. They'll get you the right products, and your beach is going to look great even for the rest of this swimming season, which is not nearly over. Call Aquaside at 1-800-328-9350 or go to Aquaside.com. And now, from the mayor's office above the boathouse on the east shore of Spoon Lake, it's Garage Logic with Chris Reavers manning Technology Corner. Kenny Olson from the Krabby Coffee Shop. John Hyde in the newsroom. And, of course, the rookie. Here is your flashlight king, fireworks commissioner, and the keeper of common sense, your mayor, Joe Sushir. Just a few notes on last night, which was uh, very nice, Excellent. thanks to the uh, Chan Acid Dinner Theater and all the GLers. Before you move on, that show will be available for the mass audience tonight at 6 p.m. on the same Garage Logic website. Christian Hermanson notes that he and his bride flew back from Germany for the show. What? Really? Oh, wow. well, they win the long distance award. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, Jackie was asking me after the show. Yeah, Jackie came from way, way up north. She asked, she, she had met another couple that came from South Dakota. I can't remember what city. But she was wondering who who made the farthest. So we, we got to give the German uh, the Germans need oh, yeah. uh, some sort of T-shirt reward. Uh, I met Jackie. C- coffee cup. Jackie will like a conspiracy. Oh, I love Jackie. <laughs> ja- she's the one that turned me on to the whole uh, Hawaii thing, and I love her for she it. She explained to me last night why all the boats were burned in the harbor because yeah. the fire came from the wrong direction. That see, I think we need to delve into that. That is fun. That's Hail very the flashlight king. Hail you. This is Josh from Winnebago, Minnesota. Thanks for hosting the 30th anniversary show. My father-in-law, 15-year-old son, and I made the trip, and we thoroughly enjoyed the entire cast of characters, including the stories from the CP. Oh, yes. I'm afraid (laughs) we've created a monster there. Uh, (laughs) Is she coming in today? (laughs) On the drive home, my son made an observation. He'd never been to an event where a bunch of strangers sitting at a table could so easily strike up a conversation and joke with one another without fear of offending anyone. Yeah, yeah. All I could say is that's GL. Our table was a cross section of garage logicians, ages 15 to 70, men and women, urban, rural, of varying occupations. Great people. Thank you for putting this together, Town of Garage Logic. 30 years and still growing strong. We're looking forward to the 35th anniversary show. Yeah. In the meantime, at the state fair. In yes. the meantime, congratulations <laughs> on 30 years and good luck. See you at the fair. Yes. Josh Stensland, age 41, cylinder index of 43. Perfect. Card carrying member of the town council. We met Josh at the ball game as well. Josh is a great dude. All right. And this is uh, this is from Scott Nelson. First, could I get the time and temp? Secondly, I was. It was wonderful to gather with you and the GLers in Chanhassen. I used the opportunity to introduce my wife to Garage Logic, and she loved it. Fun to hear her laughter from across the table. Congratulations and thank you for 30 years of GL. Your voices and wisdom feel like old friends. The common sense approach of GL has changed hearts and minds of friends for which I have shared your message. In a ray of hope, your uh, show has finally persuaded persuaded my dyed-in-the-wool Democrat mother to admit that if these things about the left you say are true, I simply must stop voting. 
She cannot bring herself to vote Republican because she has been told for so very long that voting Democrat is more compassionate. No, it isn't. Joe, in a state where Palenti and Franken slugged it out over 200 votes, convincing our friends and family to stay out of the voting booth over concerns such as walls, blowing a $17 billion surplus and raising taxes may be enough to turn the tide of the elected liberal lunatics who are destroying our once great state angry, but pushing back town council member Scott for me, Dinah. And I have an, oh, Rockets Red Glare was an early fireworks queen. Yes, I remember. Yeah. In fact, was Rockets the first fireworks queen? She might have been. Yeah. Uh, we hit the Van Tassel neighborhood. She might have been the first one. Well, Rockets was there and I didn't see her. Rockets, well, notes that, there. Rockets notes that she's born and bred in Austin, Minnesota, raised on spam. Her dad worked at Hormel for 39 years. I'd happily join you on your visit to the spam museum. I was just there a couple of weeks ago to freshen up my attire. By the way, last night's a. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, by the way, last night's event was fantastic. Thank you. I also met... don't wait. Wait, raised on spam, Johnny. That should be a song. Can you write a song called Raised, raised, on, raised spam. on Spam? Yeah. Wow. Get your guitar, John. Yeah. Raised yeah, on that's, Spam. That's got to. You know who I met last night? We might have met him before, but who I might have been reintroduced to? Aaron Rivard. Does that name ring a bell? The last name yeah. does. Yeah. Aaron Rivard, mm -hmm. Somerset, Wisconsin. I know exactly. He was a citizen of the week. And do you re and we went through a period where uh, and this is signed by Judy Dibble, uh, the letter to him that says, "Dear Citizen Rivard, at last you will find enclosed your official citizen of the week certificate suitable for framing. I apologize that it took so long in getting to you, but the printer we were forced to use was not located in Garage Logic, Minnesota, <laughs> and therefore didn't get it that we wanted to get the certificates printed in a timely manner. <laughs> we hope you will hang your certificate proudly. Sincerely, Probably Judy equipment. Dibble. Remember, Judy was great. Yes. Uh, and then here's here's the award he got. It was a suitable for framing mm -hmm. Garage Logic award. Oh, cool. You remember the line that won him the award. He wrote us a letter about how he uh, bought a truck from the state of Wisconsin. He bought an 89 GMC Suburban okay. in 1997. And it had a uh, it had one hundred and thirty thousand miles on it. All right. I think I got it. All right, I and won't blow it though. Okay, and uh, he writes uh, to the he copied us on his letter to the state of Wisconsin. All right, I was pleased to find a letter in my mailbox from the state of Wisconsin proclaiming what a good deal I received when I purchased a seven year old <laughs> suburban with nearly one hundred and thirty thousand miles on it. I see where this it. is going already. <laughs> I'm sure everyone would fork over nearly nine grand for a vehicle so new with low <laughs> mileage. I know a lot of my friends were in a state of disbelief when I told them what a vehicle of that make and vintage costs. Therefore, it was easy for me to understand why the state would want some more money. Uh, I think they asked him for some title said, fees or something. Yeah. I'm sure glad someone in Madison is working hard to keep restraints on that villain, the used car owner. Of course, all of the monies received from this purchase will be used to improve our wonderful state highway system. I know whenever a purchase is made from a dealership, it is very easy for someone to take advantage of the state. Thank God you people are looking out for my welfare. <laughs> to correct this matter, I called Rouston Motors to inform them a pricing mistake had been made on their part. They, however, they refused to accept any more money. They didn't charge me enough. Right. <laughs> to personally clear this up with the state of Wisconsin, and here comes the clincher, and this is why Mr. Rivard won Citizen of the Week. Uh, to personally clear up this matter with the state of Wisconsin, I'm offering my truck to you for the low price of 12000 <laughs> Have Tommy, would have been the governor at that time. Tommy Thompson. Tommy Thompson. Yeah. Have Tommy send a check, and I'll leave the keys in it. I'm sure a full-size Suburban could serve the DOT well as it sleeps nine. Yeah, that's what I As it sleeps six, I'm sure. As it sleeps six. And we saw the sleep six line, and he yep. wants Citizen of the Week. So good to see him. <laughs> That's, that's a real legitimate. I you cannot, 
you, a relative can't sell you a five thousand dollar vehicle for a thousand dollars, according to the state of Minnesota. You can't you go in so there. Good of a deal. You can't go in there and say I paid a thousand dollars for it. They'll make you bump it up to what the value is, despite the yeah. fact that you paid well under the value. That's happened to me. Quick what? question though. Yeah. What? Yeah. Why Wait, did you why did I give a car to a kid to have the kid say a Doesn't dollar? Doesn't matter. That's what happened with my plow truck. I yep. paid nothing for it, and I had to um, I had to declare the value at like forty five hundred or something like that. So he returned the original document. I, he copied them for me and brought them. Oh, last that's night. a copy for you. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. I was like, why would he give you night. back the original? What does he do for a living? That was brilliant writing. I really enjoyed that. Well, he must. I, I don't know. He knows uh, how to string some words together. Let me see. That was good. He uh, he offered a lot of paperwork. Uh, I don't what, like what, paperwork. What else does he say? <laughs> uh, I don't know what he does for a living. I wish I could write like that. Yeah. And he copied me on the letter that he received from the state. Uh, he said the purchase price you reported was less than the fair market value <laughs> yeah. of the vehicle. They come after you. And then he yeah. sent the letter saying, I'm sorry, I didn't pay the, enough. The lady at the DMV said, you may as well take care of this now because the state will come after you. Yeah. They look for that. Okay. And uh, apparently yesterday uh, you irritated Keith Olson in Terry, Montana. I did. When you said uh, unintentionally, that Terry was two hours from the North Dakota border. He said it's just a few ticks of the clock over one hour. Okay. Uh, I was surprised John did not FYI you, but then isn't he from South Dakota? No, John's no, from North. North Dakota. You see, out here in the free state of Montana, and uh, this this is a perfect segue to what, what we absolutely need to discuss. You see, out here in the free state of Montana, we can run down I-94 at 80 miles per hour. Besides the crushing weight of people, the sloth-like speed limits of my original state of the People's Republic of Minnesota make me want to scream, I'll take eastern Montana any day. The liberals think it's ugly, so they infest the western part of the state. Cheers. Keith Olson, Terry Montana, P.S. I hope I missed the net if I took the bait. <laughs> no, I wasn't fishing. It was a good one. It was a mistake. Uh, I'm a Glendive guy. A Glendive is where I always pull over and take a nap or get fuel. So sorry about that, Keith. Before you move on from last night's festivities. I am moving on. I know you are. Uh, we had a couple of seconds after you got done with your epic drum solo uh, up on top I of the stage. I couldn't hear anything. Either. I know, I know. Um, but this is, because Mike Fratelloni put this bug in my ear a week ago. He said, you have to do this when you guys are on stage at Chanhassen. And, and it worked out brilliantly. Yeah, yeah. Hail the flashlight king! Hail you! Yeah, that was pretty that good. That was resounding. Really cool. That was a good one. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to use that from now on. And I like the call and response at the end. We're not going to be at the fair. Oh, we are going to be at the fair. Yay! Yay. I liked the desperate market manager's lone voice (laughs) saying, wait, wait, do the disparage. He was like, like, uh, what's his name? Justin Hoffman in the uh, the graduate. (laughs) The free state of Montana. Headline, front page of today's Star Tribune. I'm sure, I know Kenny read it. Uh, you two morons probably didn't read it. Oh, yeah. I, I know the cover story. Cover. Montana judge rules for a young climate activist. Helena, Montana, Dateline. Young environmental activists, they range in age from five up into their 20s. Five. Young environmental activists scored what may be a groundbreaking legal victory Monday when a Montana judge said state agencies were violating their constitutional right, violating the constitutional right of these children, Mm -hmm. to a clean and healthful environment by allowing fossil fuel development. Uh, That's insanity. The ruling is the first of its kind, in the first of its kind trial in the U.S., adds to a small, a small number of legal decisions around the world that have established a government duty to protect citizens from climate change. That's nowhere in the Constitution. Where the government has to protect the citizens it's not from in, climate change. It's okay. not in the Constitution. Okay. If it stands, the ruling could set an important legal precedent, though experts said its immediate impacts will be limited and state officials pledged to seek to overturn the decision on appeal. 
And they found a judge, District Court Judge Kathy Seeley, found the policy the state uses in evaluating requests for fossil fuel permits, which does not allow agencies to evaluate the effects of greenhouse gas emissions, is unconstitutional. She is she is pulling this out of her butt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, think of that for a minute. What she found to to bolster her constitutional claim is that state the state doesn't in, in the issuing of a fossil fuel permit, the state does not evaluate the effects of that permit if they result in, for example, greenhouse gas emissions. And she's found that to be unconstitutional. And you're saying, where is that in the Constitution? It's not in the Constitution. Think of, let me pause, think of how successfully the failed academy has educated these children to convince them that the government is their answer to not only everything, but their answer to something as unknowable as nature. Hmm. The failed academy should be extremely proud of itself. And yes, that would be the failed academy in Montana. You could imagine what the kids are hearing in California, Minnesota, New York, Illinois, this is Montana. She, she's make up, making up a law that's she, not a law. Out of whole cloth. Yeah, completely. She has found something in the Constitution that does not exist. Seeley wrote, Montana's emissions and climate change have proven to be a substantial factor in causing climate impacts to, Minas- to Montana's environment and harm and injury to the youth. I defy her to explain what evidence she had for that. For for the damage to the youth, yeah. What evidence do you have? What proof? How are they damaged? Law professor, let's go back to the failed academy. You know, it's no longer faith, family. And football. Work. (laughs) uh, Patriotism. It's now gender. Mm-hmm. Climate change, pronouns, equity, Offensive. diversity, and pronouns. Law professor David, uh, in other words, the likes of Judge Seeley are worried about things that have nothing to do with the formation of the United States of America. Law professor David Dana at the North. Western Pritzker School of Law said the ruling was a remarkable win for the young climate activists. Excuse me while I turn the page. Excuse me while I whip this out. Yep. (laughs) And he predicted it will be used as a guidepost for attorneys bringing similar suits in other states. I, I'm shocked that, that that this case has not yet been brought in this crumbling state. By crumbling, I mean a state whose traditions and conventions are crumbling to be replaced by gender, climate change, equity, DEI. However, it's up to Montana legislature to determine how to bring the state's policies into compliance. That leaves slim chance for immediate change in a fossil fuel friendly state where Republicans dominate the state house. Uh, th- that's true. And it, this this lawsuit is very theatrical and it's not going to mean anything and it's not going to get anywhere. But but it's the nipping at the heels that have started. Next paragraph though. This is what I'm I can't get by the next paragraph. I don't know what this means. The ruling really provides no, nothing. No, you missed oh, it. Montana yeah. is one of the few states that has environmental protections written into its constitution. So is she following that guideline? Maybe it's the Montana Constitution she's referring to and not the US Constitution. And there's a picture of the uh, uniformly white, smiling children here. The five-year-olds? 
and I do say white on purpose. Uh, this is uh, there's not a lot of black kids who have this as a worry. It seems to me. Okay. They got other things to worry right. about. It's they just emotional it. propping up, though, is what this is so far. But this could lead to more down the road. The ruling really provides nothing beyond emotional support for the many cases seeking to establish a public trust right, human right, or federal constitutional right. I guess it is the federal constitution to a healthy environment, said James Huffman, Dean Emeritus at Lewis and Clark Law School in Portland, Oregon. I'm afraid the law profession is going the way of the failed academy. Well, they're all activists. State officials tried to derail the case and prevent it from going to trial through numerous motions to dismiss the lawsuit. Seeley, the judge, they really found the right judge, rejected those attempts. Julia Olson, an attorney representing the kids, released a statement calling the ruling a win for Montana, for youth, for democracy, and for our climate. Yeah, okay, if you're going to read this, I have to warn the GLers, put on your barn boots, it's about to get thick in here. (laughs) Go ahead. A fire rages, uh, as fires rage in the West, fueled by fossil fuel pollution. Dun, dun, dun. (laughs) Today's ruling in Montana is a game changer that marks a turning point in this generation's efforts to save the planet from the devastating effects of human-caused climate <laughs> chaos, chaos. <laughs> said Julie. That's Julie Olson, the executive director of Our Children's Trust, an Oregon environmental group that has filed lawsuits over climate change in every state since 2011. This is an insanity that speaks to an absolute complete loss of what I would call faith right. that has been replaced by this secular belief that humans are in control of the earth and that because evil mothers drive their kids to a soccer game in the minivan, they need to be attacked they're ruining the earth. What do we got? A little control room somewhere? But the, the GLers in Montana are not taking this um, lay, laying down. The ironically named Emily Flower, who you would think isn't that a hippie name if you've ever right. heard one? She's a she's a GLer and on our side, right? She's but before a, we get to Emily, let's parse this, Julie Julia Olson. No, she's insane. As fires rage in the West, <laughs> yeah. fueled. fueled by fossil fuel pollution, mm-hmm. that makes no sense. They're fueled by burning wood that was poorly maintained by state agencies. But she, I think she's trying to put us in the mind of we've got smoke coming up from the fires, we've got pollution from the cars, and pollution from coal and oil, and We uh, we can't you can't push back hard enough. No. If, if these people win, if the likes of these young plaintiffs and their attorneys in Montana win, you you do not have this country. This, you, this you is the to, mystery. You need to replace the word "if" with "while." When. No, while while these people win, because yeah, that's, that's what's happening. That's what they're doing. Well, unless Emily Flower has anything to say about it. Emily Flower is a spokeswoman for Montana Attorney General Austin Knudsen. She decried the ruling as absurd. Well, it is absurd. And said the office, her office, Montana Attorney General, planned to appeal. She criticized Seeley for allowing the plaintiffs to put on what Flower called a taxpayer-funded publicity stunt. That's really all it is. Montanans can't be blamed for changing the climate, Flowers said. Their same legal theory has been thrown out of federal court in courts in more than a dozen states. It should have been here as well, but they found an ideological judge who bent over backwards to allow the case to move forward and earn herself a spot in their next documentary. So thank you, Emily Flower, with with your extraordinarily unlikely name. Attorneys for the 16 plaintiffs ranging in age from 5 to 22 Hmm. 
Would you please explain to me how a five-year-old can be a plaintiff in a lawsuit over something as <laughs> over something as magnanimous as nature? They don't. They don't care about the this five, kid. Can't tie you know, his shoes. Five-year-old. Right. What do they care about? Play-Doh, Legos, poop yep. jokes. Yeah, yep. poop jokes. Body jokes. Yeah. Uh, attorneys for the 16 plaintiffs ranging in age from 5 to 22 presented evidence during the trial in June that increasing carbon dioxide emissions are driving hotter temperatures. So they presented evidence of that, that we need to see that evidence because basically we're unaware of that evidence. Right. What evidence did they present to the ideological judge that increased carbon dioxide emissions are driving hotter temperatures, more drought, and wildfires, and decreased snowpack. That's the, that was on the five-year-old's agenda? And the state said, I'm going to paraphrase what the state said. The state said, who are you morons fooling? If we stop producing CO2 today, CO2 today, it would have no effect on a global scale. How about China? Indonesia? Good place to start. India? Yep. And these pampered, privileged, white, spoiled children have managed to... Uh, well, let's be clear. It's their parents. These yeah. kids don't know their ass from their elbow. Come on. Do you recall the fellow who uh, emailed us last winter, just this past winter, talking about how he constantly had to bail out the across-the-street neighbors yes. who were Mysterians. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. Uh, they had, one time the lady came out and sprinkled table salt. <laughs> there and you go. He wrote again. I'm going to get to the gist of his email uh, later in the show. But in the email, uh, he writes, uh, I know that you know what... Oh, he's talking about how they... Oh, I'll get to that. Uh I told him, well, let me find it. Oh, they emailed me, or they called me to see if I could fix their garage door after watching her run into it for the second time. <laughs> they asked me to fix the door like I did two years ago. But I don't want to be responsible for their stuff anymore, so I thought, hmm, Precision Garage Door Twin Cities. So I quickly told them to give them a call, and they were out the same day, even though it was a weekend, with a new door. Because, But because of Precision Garage Doors Twin Cities, the husband and I are at least talking now. But the best part is, is I have tons of stories. I've been writing them down and would be happy to share one or two with you every week. Okay. About this Mysterian family. Yes. So Precision Garage Door of the Twin Cities came through. This is how they come through. They, they came did. out on a weekend. They don't charge more for weekends. And in this case, they provided a new door to a hapless Mysterian who ran into the door. All right. And there's more to come. That will be later. But it's Precision Garage Door of the Twin Cities serving the metro in western Wisconsin. They don't charge more for weekends there. They're available 24-7. Uh, they serve the metro and western Wisconsin. They fix everything, the springs, the rollers, the openers, you name it. Uh, plus, as we're now seeing with eyewitness accounts, a new door just in the nick of time on a weekend. They're my new garage door guy, and they're the entire family. A Minnesota GL family-owned business, Precision Garage Door of the Twin Cities, Reach them at PrecisionDoorMN.com. You know, the investment game can be awfully tricky, especially in these volatile times. And that's why you need the best and also somebody that you can trust. And that's why I rely on Josh Arnold. We know him as Mr. Money Talk around these parts. And he's here for you. So give him a call today for that free 48-minute no-obligation consultation by dialing 952-925-5608. 952-925-5608. Josh has been at this a long time with a track record of success, and he's here to help you. So give him a call today. No obligation. Obligation. That's right. No obligation. It's absolutely free. 952-925-5608. And tell them you heard about them here on the Garage Logic Podcast. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC, a security investment advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Chris Reavers is a paid endorser. Truth, justice, and the suture. Yeah. 
could this be the music for Raised on Spam, John? Or are you working something I, up? Uh, I already worked something okay, up. I, okay, I can good. actually probably do it a little later today. All, All right. I ran into a GLer last night thanking me, and uh, that's when I get nervous. Uh, for what? Uh for all the advice I've been giving out for years on seafoam, he's been using it around his farm, his place, and it's really changed its life. It's it's a wonderful product. It helps your engine run better, last longer. It cleans harmful gum and varnish from the entire fuel system. Safe to use in anything that r- runs on gas or fuel, cars, trucks, machinery. Just pour it in your fuel tank, let it do the work, uh, and it works great let in me, the oil. Let me finish your ad for you. All right. You all know my brother. Uh, I know he both had of them. He his pontoon boat out the last weekend. The smart one or the dumb one? Uh, they're both smart. <laughs> okay. He had his pontoon oh, wow. boat out. It's got the, but the 15-year-old outboard on it. I think this is the pontoon I've seen you on before. No, he just got this. Oh, all right. It, it was running rough, and he bought a new fuel filter, and then he steered the pontoon boat to shallow water so he could stand in the water and replace the, oh, sure. the fuel filter rather than bending over the motor. Right. He couldn't get the fuel filter off. He feared without breaking something. It was on there too tight. So he said, the hell with it. He, this is a true story. He dumped a can of sea foam in the gas tank. Yeah. The thing ran perfect. Isn't that amazing? Wow. And he's considering it now fixed. He's not going to worry about the fuel filter. It is fixed. It's fixed. Today's gasoline is garbage. It doesn't last six months. The seafoam cured it. It was running smooth back to the port. It breaks down right away. It gums up. It's sludgy. And seafoam dissolves all of that. It works great in the gas. It works great in the crankcase. Yeah. Pour it in where you fill the oil, and it breaks breaks apart all that gum and stuff. Next time you change oil, it flushes right out of there. It's an amazing product. You can find it everywhere, auto parts stores, the NAC hardware, big uh, retailers, uh, convenience stores. A local company, a global reach, and truly a wonderful product in a world of bad gas. We're talking seafoam. Back to the uh, kids in Montana. The state argued that even if Montana completely stopped producing CO2, it would have no effect on a global scale because states and countries worldwide contribute to CO2. But Seeley said the state's attorneys failed to give a compelling reason for why they were not evaluating greenhouse gas emissions. She rejected the notion that Montana's greenhouse gas emissions are insignificant. Well, they are insignificant in terms of geography. I mean, Montana is about the size of Germany uh, in a large, large world. Hmm. So I would say Montana is green with a relatively small population. Germany has how many? Look up the population of Germany and then give me the population of Montana. In other words, she's claiming that uh, Montana's CO2 emissions are significant. No, they're not. Not compared to the Earth. Not compared to other countries. Germany probably has what? 83. 83 million people. One point. In a country the size of Montana, basically. Okay. Okay, so now how many people do Montana have? One point, uh, almost 1.1 million. <laughs> On the face of it, lady, you're making the wrong claim. It's basically about 10% of the people. <laughs> oh, well, that's what you get when you get ideology. Uh, where am I? Oh, I was reading the uh, Dinah Sex Offender story. Never mind, I was reading the wrong story. Uh, 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 okay. But Seeley said the state's attorneys failed to give a compelling reason for why they were not evaluating greenhouse gas emissions. She rejected the notion that Montana's greenhouse gas emissions are insignificant. Well, they are insignificant, lady, and noted that renewable power is technically feasible and economically beneficial. It is? No, it isn't. Citing testimony from the trial indicating Montana could replace 80% of existing fossil fuel energy by the year 2030. That's uh, almost uh, just about six and a half years from now. Not going to happen. Can't be done. But yes, it can if you're going to allow the mystery to win. I ain't. Then you don't have the United States. Then you have a different, different operation entirely. Completely different operation. 
than the one we have now. And the one we have now, we can see being tattered and torn around the perimeters. The EPA is running Montana, mm-hmm. an unelected body. My question for you is, how do they find these judges? Uh, no, let me rephrase that. Did they find this judge and put this in her courtroom, or is this a random judge that just comes up? And is she following the letter of the Constitution, the Montana Constitution, that has these environmental protections in it? Did she not have a choice here? I'm not clear how attorneys go judge shopping, but they yeah. do. Oh, they do. Okay. They do. Okay. Okay. And they, uh, it's it's not plausible to me that she was a random so judge. This is something that started either in the judge's chambers or on the golf course, yeah. or at exactly. a coffee shop, yep. and they're scheming and rubbing their hands together. And here's what we're gonna okay. do. Okay, kids, we got uh, we got the right judge. We got uh, Seely, and uh, she'll she'll handle this. And I love uh, Emily Flowers' line that the judge got herself a. A little segment in the next uh, documentary, these kids about these kids. Because you watch, the networks will probably give you a sixty-minute special on these kids or whatever. And Judge Seely will be a part of. Well, it. She'll be a hero. Yeah. And meanwhile, Emily Flower will be doing the devil's work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if 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 the likes of this crowd win, then you do not have the United States. It's that simple. What's well, going to stop it? And the administration we currently have in place is of no help to stop this. You don't think so? None. Oh. Zero. So uh, Emily Flowers and uh, the attorney, they're going to appeal this. Who yeah. chooses the judge there? It's I, the, it's the next level up of courts, right? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But it's a, uh, you can bet this, this made every newspaper in the country. Because it fits right in with basically the agenda of most newspapers in the country. But just that one segment alone, Montana's uh, greenhouse gas emissions uh, cannot possibly be significant just based on mathematics. Right. You, you mean ev- actual evidence? Just based on <laughs> fact. Just based on acreage. It can't be done. Just based on the number of people, we are carbon dioxide spewing machines, yes. each and every one of us. Germany has 80 million in a landmass the size of Montana, which has a little over a million people. But their greenhouse gas emissions are as significant as anywhere else in the world. Why didn't somebody just nail this moron judge on that point? Well, and but the uphill battle continues to be all of those things that she stated at the very beginning of her piece about the fires raging and whatnot. All of that is accepted as fact to a certain demographic of people. Right. And that's the problem. Well, I said at the outset, the failed academy is to be congratulated for uh, winning <laughs> for for uh, the recipe that resulted in these uh, plaintiffs ranging in age from 5 to 22 the failed academy is wholly responsible for their creation is wholly responsible for their thinking now take that thinking to the next step if if these people win and it it becomes law that the government of the United States, if not the government of Montana, is responsible for nature, in essence. What else then would these kids expect the government to provide for them? Everything. They're going to take it all. Everything. Look how fast he caved in. I got a lot of outbuildings I need to... I'm, I'm on a website... A Montana government website, mm-hmm. the Montana Department of Environmental uh, Environmental Quality, mm-hmm. DEQ. <clears throat> it is our mission to champion a healthy environment for a thriving Montana. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. At DEQ, we believe Montana communities and business thrive when environmental protections are implemented effectively in a consistent and transparent way. The DEQ is home to a dedicated team of professionals, engineers, and scientists who work hard to implement Montana's environmental laws and provide high-quality public service and technical assistance. 
Our team is here to serve you, ensure all Montanans have clean air, water, and land free from contamination for generations to come. It seems to me, reading this, and since it's part of the Montana government, they've already lost. What can flow from this? Well, why wouldn't the government be responsible for providing a roof over your head? Well, that's what I'm saying. We're, the line's going to just keep moving forward, and pretty soon... Because gonna... the, these kids don't know what they've surrendered. They've surrendered a great segment of their individuality. They've, they've surrendered a great segment of their freedoms. They've surrendered their own decision-making processes. They've surrendered... Where's the parents, though? The parents, well, the parents they're complicit. Yeah, I, I would they imagine they. Uh, I would imagine their parents are on board, just as you see, many parents are uh, very on board with kids transitioning their gender at the age of five or six. Yeah, the parents are on board. I, I don't see it any differently here. That the you know the five year old comes home and says, "Hey, I want to save the earth, mommy." Uh, I'm, I've been recruited to join this group that's going to sue. She probably said, way to go, Billy. That's great. Well, I'll we'll stand behind you. But you asked a question earlier about you know pushing back, and I get all of that. But I still hold out hope that there's far more people that are sitting either in the middle or kind of on the side that we are. Because this is just the outspoken minority. Don't you guys think the same yeah, way? And this isn't just Montana. This is a global thing. And this will be happening in every state in the union, including uh, Minnesota, because this Julia Olson, the attorney representing the youth, she's actually the executive director of Our Children's Trust, mm -hmm. an environmental uh, group from Oregon. And they've been filing climate deals like this since 2011. Mm -hmm. So they're coming here. They're coming to and, Iowa. I said, I'm shocked it hasn't happened here. Maybe it oh, has, and we don't even notice it. I am what? also seeing, uh, I, went, <laughs> I went to a story from before all of this was settled. You talked about judge shopping. Yeah. Uh, the lawyer says they didn't judge shop, but they state shopped oh. <laughs> because oh. of that. Because of that clause in the Montana Constitution, or not clause, it's a part of the Constitution. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they, they said it would be ripe for a judge who would have to. It's you like know. they're car shopping. Yeah, yeah they, she <laughs> said they checked out all the states, and there's only two uh, that have uh, some sort of thing in their Constitution about the environment, Pennsylvania and Montana. Jesus. They had already been in Pennsylvania. Now they're in Montana, and, and she said that's why they went there. Oh, you're so right, John. And since there is a an official... Montana De uh, Department of Environmental Quality. You know they have a friend there. Call me the Environmental Department. That was actually passed, believe it or not, that amendment to their constitution in 1972, which <laughs> you wouldn't oh, think. Oh, it's been but, lying yeah, right. dormant. It's like yep, a sleeper no. cell. Yeah, but in 1972, <laughs> they were just they were imagining clear trout streams and. Yep. Uh, uh, safer, was that the acid rain era? Better conditions for hunting. And, what was going to yeah. kill us back then? Uh, A like ozone, Rick said, acid ozone rain? Ozone and cold weather. Got it. Yeah, but blue planets weren't scary. That wasn't scary. No. <laughs> Say Kevin McDonald, our friend Kevin, uh, mm -hmm. he said he stopped by Grunhofer's this past weekend. He's gotten to know the staff by now. That's what happens when GLers go to Grunhofer's in Hugo, about a mile north of Hugo on Highway 61. World's greatest meat emporium. Yep. And he said he was picking up some beef jerky, and they have a fabulous, he says, potato salad. Yes, I it agree completely. It is a fabulous potato salad. No, their salad. potato salad is absolutely legit. Well, get legit. this. Get this, and Kevin's going to hold out on us. One of the staff inadvertently let it slip as to where the third location will be. Oh, boy. Mm. But he said, yes, I know where it's going to be, but I can't tell you. And he won't tell oh, what us. What a jerk. Signed, pleasantly surprised, <laughs> Kevin McDonald. And he said, see you at the theater. I don't know if I talked to Kevin last night or I not. I didn't see him. There's a lot of people there. Uh, uh, Kevin is a typical uh, fan of Grunhofer's for the brats, the steaks, the burgers, the everything. And you do get to know the people. And as I've said, if you have cooking instruction questions, which I would have, ask them. They're all experts. They've all been trained by the mad scientist Spencer, who's back there with his uh, uh, hat on with antennas on it, dreaming up new 
brat flavors like root beer float brat, which I think sounds fantastic. It's Grunhofer's Old Fashioned Meats in Hugo, just a little north of Hugo on Highway 61. Today they're featuring the sweet and heat beef jerky. Uh-huh. Mm, you guys are beef really jerky good. fans, aren't you? Oh, oh I do yeah. like it. I do yeah. like that flavor. And the Grunhoffers in Forest Lake, just uh, immediately east of 35 on 97. So you're headed up north, bring a cooler, swing in there and load up. And there will be a third location. And now there are members of the public who know the location <laughs> and will not share it with those of us at Garage Logic. So maybe you can get it out of them yourself the next time you're at Grunhofer's in Forest Lake and Hugo. Mm-hmm. Not a Garage Logic Town Council member? Here's what you're missing. I was sitting in a chair Sunday night. I got out of the chair, and I've never experienced such pain in my life in my right leg, which would not work. Ooh. Couldn't walk. Well, you're lucky that you just got checked out thoroughly. Guaranteed you were dehydrated. How much do you drink a day? A lot. No, no, no. How much water do you drink a day? Probably not enough water. <laughs> Well, it went from a lot to yeah. not enough. <laughs> How much water do you drink a day? Oh, well, this was Sunday. You had two cups of coffee before 10. You count the holy water or no? Got a couple of NAs. No, that doesn't help. I had some that's, iced that's tea. Water. <laughs> no. Well, I guess that's I didn't have enough water. water. Maybe I'll buy that theory. I probably didn't have enough water. Caffeine, that could dehydrate you. Yeah, most, whatever. Most NAs are water. I don't water. care. <laughs> Never mind. Go behind the scenes of Garage Logic with unfiltered audio and video access, invites to exclusive events, an emailed newsletter from the mayor himself, and more by signing up at garagelogic.com. Truth, justice, and the Souchere. You know, we don't always do events, but when, when we, we do, do, they're big. In fact, so big. How big are they? When we include our clients like Hofferman Water and Connecticut, uh, Jim was told the show was Wednesday night, not last night. Well, Whoops. maybe he'll be there tonight <laughs> or tomorrow night. Well, but Jim told me because I had to call to schedule my Hofferman Water filter replacement. And he said, yeah, I can't wait to see you on Wednesday. I said, Jim, the thing was... Is, is tonight, because I called him yesterday. He said, oh, well, I'm going to have to rearrange my schedule. So not sure where it got screwed up. But anyway, Hofferman Water is here for you and for your family. So here's the deal. If you've got the bad water like I did years ago, then call Hofferman Water today and get that new water softener or maybe that drinking water system installed. I'm telling you, it makes a world of difference. I actually met a GLer last night who made the switch that lived nearby me in Chanhassen. So call them today, 952 894 404 Four zero. That's their phone number. You can also look up on their website and see every single system that they have to offer at HoffermanWater.com. But you get that system installed, your showers are better, so is your laundry, and of course, your drinking water. HoffermanWater.com is their website, 952-894-4040. Hofferman Water has been proudly serving the state of Minnesota for over 50 years. Tell them that you heard about them okay. on the Garage Logic okay, podcast. Okay, before we go any further. What street did you live on? Background. You guys, background the GLers who aren't on the town council. Because sometimes you forget. Because we I when a conversation know I'm on a break or not. I have no idea. During the last break, Joe and Rook got into it. Um, I had, I've taken recent possession of a, uh, a serving tray, which a nice Manhattan would just look beautiful on there. It's amazing. And it's, it's, it's wooden and there's two handles on the side and etched in the wood is White Bear Lake, Ramsey and Washington counties, Minnesota. And it's a depth chart lake, but it's blue and yes. amazing. It gives the lake area 24, 2,400 acres, the deepest point, 83 feet. What street were you on again? South Shore? No, not a meat eye. <laughs> you were on. He's so raw about this. You know, and it came from what? The Irvins? It Hot Irvins, Irvin's a friend State. of mine. Hot yeah. Irvins, a friend of mine. Do you want to send him this? Sure. <laughs> so we called Mick, uh, Matthew's wife, over oh, I'm, the break. I'm coming to your house. <laughs> <laughs> and without without even telling her what we were talking about, she knew. Yes, right away she knew. She said, "No, you can't have it. You can't have it." Well, you're you're not. I want keep that. This. You can't have it. Well, you're not keeping this. 
I'll try to find another one. I'm sure they made two. I've done this to him a few times with books, Joe, where he somebody has sent him a book, and I said, no, you're not worthy of this book. I'm taking this book. <laughs> and he acquiesced. He just gave in right away. Right. But you're holding out I on this I think your one. depth was like about 25 or 30 where your house was because I, I put a little <laughs> magic marker there. Where you're, <laughs> <laughs> I put a little ding mark every time I look at it. Dings. <laughs> Uh, going through no your indication phone how old this is. No, she probably looked on the back. If there was, she would have sent that. Well, I'm glad she sent me a picture of what I'm going to have. <laughs> uh, it's very nice. It's very nice. My uh, favorite part of that phone call was when, at the end, Rook, who's, you know, he's funny and sarcastic, and we have fun with him, but he says at the end of the call in this voice, How's your day going? Oh, God. Just, and you guys just came. Oh, my God. I'm trying to seriously find out some information. Blew up a little bit. Oh, you, was, uh, 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 yeah. So also back to... <laughs> no, we're going to John Height. Oh, well, I was going to give you the Chanhassen. They do other cars like Candio, the Cars Tribute. That's um, right. Saw the poster. Legends of Country, uh, Music of Fleetwood, John Denver. Here's the thing about the CDT, dummies. It's such an easy, perfect date night and a gift for your gal. It seriously is. Plus, you've got a hotel room. Uh, right next, stumbling in, distance. In the parking lot. And the hotel rooms have living rooms in them. Yes. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Here's John Height. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Joe. Uh, the Montana thing. Can I go a couple more for Please. you? Please. Uh, you, uh, you made a great point there with Germany and Montana. Mm -hmm. uh, Montana. Uh, actually is 10,000 square miles bigger than Germany, too. Really? So that even, that even really? adds to the, your... Uh, wow. They're 147,000, and Germany's 138,000. So, uh, you know, yeah, to tomorrow... Uh, are you here? Yeah, you're here tomorrow. We're going to get an earful from all of our Montana GLers. I hope oh, yeah. so. Yeah, I, I really want to hear yeah, from yeah. them. Yeah. Uh, the other thing, and I, I don't think you brought this up. I was doing some research on it when you were talking, but the, did you see the EPA statement on the court ruling? I did not. The Environmental Protection Agency of the United States, here's their statement. Yeah. Across the nation, young people are sounding the alarm about the environment they are set to inherit. The ruling today is a landmark moment in their effort to protect the earth for future generations. Every day, the youth in Montana and across their world are watching the impacts of climate change fill their social media feeds as they witness the increasing or increased frequency of wildfires and flooding. No longer are young people... No longer are young people demanding action on the climate crisis from the sidelines. They are successfully advocating for it themselves. And then there's another paragraph that basically says the All same All those thing. little frauds better never use plastic, wear leather shoes. I could go on and on right. and on. I mean, it's yep. just... Nobody's willing to say sit down and shut up anymore. That's the problem. There's no in cutoff. Montana? There's no cutoff age anymore. In Montana, I thought that's what it's all about. Of Montana, Alaska. Leave us alone. Leave us alone. Yeah. Well, they better yeah. wake up. Well, mm -hmm. you hear that, you Montanans? You better. That's why I moved to Wyoming. You guys aren't waking up. <laughs> right. My people in Wyoming are waking up. You guys stink. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Tell them, tell them, well, tell them wait, wait, wait a minute. I kind of like Montana. <laughs> uh, in the news, a man has died in what St. Paul police now say is the city's 23rd homicide of the year after a shooting last night on Raspberry Island. According to police, officers were called to the area of 2 South Wabasha Street just after 9 p.m. report of a shooting. When officers got there, they found what was described as a chaotic scene, finding a man who they say had gunshot injuries. He died at Regions Hospital despite being given aid by the responding officers. Uh, currently, police think a large group of people had gathered on the island and shots were fired after some kind of altercation. In addition, police say loud music may have had something to do with the fight, but they're still working on putting everything together. I would like anyone who has any details about this shooting to call them 651-266-5650. So that's right under Wabasha, right? Yeah. And what is there like? It's Raspberry Island, the island that has the, the uh, rowing house on it? Yes. Okay. Uh, Different Min than Harriet Island. Minnesota Boat Club, it yeah. says. Yes. It's yeah. So is there like it's a... distinct from Harriet Island. It, the bridge that you take to get over there can... Cars can drive on that, right? No, I'm I'm thinking there is no bridge to Raspberry Island. Well, according to the you you can take the, they had to swim out there to shoot each other. Wabashaw or Robert <laughs> to get Put out the, there, hold their gun up in the air. <laughs> yeah. No, there's a there's a, a walkway or uh, some sort of bridge that runs right under Wabashaw Street. All right, because then that's, that's where the why don't you look it up on your white bear that's, map? 
<laughs> I can't. I can't. I'm looking at this uh, picture. But isn't that where their little um, music amphitheater is? That's Harriet Island. Okay. That's Harriet, which actually isn't an island. Well, let's not worry about okay. it. It's, it's bogging us down, but and it's I, Monday, I want more from it's John. It's Monday night, and you're going there. Why are you going to go shoot someone? Especially on a bleak, rainy night. <laughs> So you want more you of shoot, a you, you shoot crystal clear night for shot. Shooting. I want it to be sunny. Got it. Got <laughs> it. <laughs> Joe and Rook want somebody shot on a sunny. That's Thursday. right. I want yeah, nice yeah. weather. Better when weather I get for shot. my shooting. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Let me pencil that in. I mean, Dan, if I'm swimming to some island in the rain with my gun sticking out of the water. <laughs> As the city of Goodhue loses its police department, plans to keep law enforcement coverage in the city still need to be worked out. Last night during a special city council meeting, the mayor and council unanimously approved the resignation letters from all the police department's officers, including the chief. They also approved plans for the mayor to meet with the Goodhue County Sheriff's Office to talk about a possible partnership to ensure the city's emergency calls are covered. Last week, Goodhue Police Chief jo uh, Josh Smith gave his letter of resignation to city leaders and his officers followed suit. According to a former Goodhue police officer, city leadership had ignored the chief's request for higher pay and better recruitment efforts. Throughout the special city council meeting, the pay rate was brought up several times as the main reason uh, the city is in this position. Anderson Buck said part of the resignation includes Chief Smith and one other full-time officer to stay on through August 24th. After that, she said the Goodhue County Sheriff's Office will take over calls and investigations. Matthew, you were correct, sir. It's called the Schubert, hold on, I'm going to make it larger, I can't see it, Schubert Club Bandshell on Raspberry mm -hmm. Island. Got it. And that is the Wabasha Street Bridge that you cross yeah. over to. Yeah, and according to Stacy, you can drive onto the island. Yeah. When you cross the Wabasha Street Bridge, you're not deposited onto an island. No, it goes over the top of it. Yeah. You have to um, get off of Wabasha and get onto this um, Water Street Harriet Island Boulevard. Co uh, connects All right, to now it. let's do the Robert Street Bridge. Okay. Let's not, John. Jeez. John, hold. Go, yes, Joe. Go, Hi. Go. How are you? Go, go, gophers. Uh, formal charges have been filed in the death of a three-year-old boy who died from a gunshot wound to his head in Hinkley. 26-year-old Roy Dean Pazamore is charged with two counts of second-degree manslaughter, child endangerment by firearm access, and negligent storage of a firearm. Court records say Pine County deputies responded to a home in Hinkley just after 9 p.m. Tuesday, August 8th. Uh, Possum Moore met the first deputy in the driveway of the home and led him to an upstairs bedroom. The uh, criminal complaint says Moore's roommate was tending the child on the bed before telling the deputy he's gone. Oh. Investigators say they found a full-size black SIG 9mm pistol on an open shelf on top of a gun cabinet in the bedroom wall. They add Possum Moore admitted to leaving the loaded and unlocked gun in the same room as his child while he was on a separate floor of the home playing video games. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Pazamore told police the boy was watching movies on his phone when the battery started dying, and he told his son to go to the bedroom. The complaint goes on to say that Pazamore told investigators he kept his handgun in an unenclosed, unsecured area in the gun safe, and the safe was knocked over when he and his roommate entered the bedroom. Further investigation found other unlocked guns in the home that were accessible to the child, including Jeez. a loaded 12-gauge shotgun. Days after the shooting, the mother of the child spoke to law enforcement. She said she moved out of the home in June after they separated. She said she had previously told him that the guns needed to be locked and out of reach of the children. Mother added there was a gun unsafe in the home, but that she never saw Pazamore use it while living with him, despite keeping the gun loaded. Why does he need so many guns? Where, where was That's this, That's not Chad? the question. Hinkley. The question is, how Hinkley. can he be so Hinkley. stupid yeah. to yes. leave him yeah. incompetent? Yeah, that's just yeah. stupidity. Duluth has banned smoking from pot to vapes and cigarettes in all city parks and is close to lessening the fine for violating the new ordinance. The city council approved an ordinance Monday night that leaves people with sidewalks and streets when it comes to smoking in public. A meeting last month drew plenty of opposition from residents, many concerned about the high cost of a potential fine at $300 and the effect on low-income residents without private property. Uh, Minnesota's new recreational marijuana, uh, marijuana law lays out where people People can smoke cannabis, which is private property and on the premises of businesses or at events licensed for on-site uh, uh, for on-site consumption. Mm -hmm. uh, Councillor Azrin Awal was a lone holdout saying she was not comfortable with what she perceived as taking away a newly given 
Right. Yes, uh, you in the back there. Oh, and, um, disregarding for a moment that that hypocrite probably is anti-cigarettes. Did you say you could smoke the dope <laughs> on a sidewalk? Smoke the dope. Yep. Can you smoke the dope on a sidewalk? Minnesota is a uh, no. Uh, no. I thought you I, said I sidewalk. You said uh, leave it to people. With si- oh, in Duluth, uh, yes, you can smoke. Uh, with uh, it doesn't say dope, it just says smoke in general, cigarettes, vapes. Yeah. Uh, on sidewalks and streets. Okay. What if there's a sidewalk that runs through the park? Can't you just stand on the sidewalk and smoke dope? Uh, well, wouldn't the park probably take well, the precedent? Well, par- this is, uh, the again, or these or adult assume. children threw this in there, and there's nothing's been thought out, and this is nothing but a cluster bleep, and will be <laughs> until it gets sorted out. The Pope the smokes dope. dope. Classic, man. I haven't heard that. That's Sex Pistols? No. No. no that's, uh, that was God Save the Queen. That was that also was, a best of segment on, on sorry, weekday sports talk mm-hmm. from years ago. That was Lennon's buddy. I can't remember his name, though. Whatever. John Lennon's John? friend. Yeah. And uh, Star Tribune reporting, Northtown Mall in Blaine has been sold hmm. for $31 million to Florida-based Fourth Dimension Properties in the deal that closed last week. Felix Resnick, principal with Fourth Dimension, said the location is what drew his company to the new shopping center. Resnick added, uh, not new shopping center, to the shopping center. Resnick added the mall has about 645,000 square feet of leasable space and is about 87% occupied. Largest tenant in Northtown is Becker Furniture, which has two locations there, a store and an outlet. Uh, Best Buy just closed its Northtown location in the last couple months, but they plan to reopen it as an outlet store. Other large tenants include Hobby Lobby and Burlington Coat. Can we go back to the marijuana thing? Suits, you used to smoke about an ounce a week, right? Wasn't part of the fun being sneaky? I mean, uh, I I don't see it as being fun or interesting just sitting out in the park or on a sidewalk cafe smoking a dude. Wouldn't it be more fun to go to the alley behind the dumpster and there's, yeah, a guy looking out and (laughs) passing it around? No, I think it would be far more fun to sit on a bench in the park. Do you really? Well, we can now. No, I, not no. I think I would like the alley. It's the same with pornography. Kids don't know how easy they have it these days. Pat told me the story last night again of uh, he bought the gummies. Yeah. I ate the whole thing. I didn't know you were supposed to eat the whole thing. And <laughs> oh, I got the whirlies. <laughs> Wait a minute. What is that's He can't do that. Well, he... He, no S. <laughs> well, he did, and uh, not doing it again didn't help. Did he give the rest to Katie then? I don't know. I don't know. But he tried she, it. She and, seems like she could use a few. Yeah. It was, uh, it was funny. I've, I've always thought the best way to do it was in the basement with the Night at the Opera by Queen on the right. stereo. And, I've and heard that anyway. Incense going and a fan blowing out the window. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's taking all the fun out of it, being sneaky. Why don't we... Uh, take a little sneaky break here and come back with some more news after this. We can certainly do that, Johnny. Uh, Yesterday they had a wonderful golf tournament in Duluth. I'm talking about Minnesota Masonic Charities, mnmasoniccharities.org. Now that that golf tournament is over, if you participated, thank you very much, and I'm sure there's going to be another one next year, so stay tuned for that. And if you'd like to learn more about this wonderful, wonderful organization, you can go to mnmasoniccharities.org. Compassionate, committed, and very capable. In 2006, several longstanding Minnesota charities, uh, Minnesota Masonry guys combined to create one umbrella organization, MMC, a mission to promote even greater levels of philanthropy. And the reason they're on Garage Logic is they want to get the word out. They want you GLers to know exactly what they do in their meetings. Yeah, there's some funny secret handshakes. They have a beautiful museum down in Bloomington, and they just want you to know that they're out there helping people without any government intervention. MNMasonicCharities.org is their website. I invite you to go poke around, check out some of the news events, the scholarships they have, learn about their uh, Masonic historical buildings, and check out their podcast as well. MNMasonicCharities.org. of Spoon Lake. We're celebrating 30 years of Garage Logic. Thanks in part to North American Banking Company. All right, now for the third day in a row. 
the update <clears throat> from Norwood Young America on the Christmas tree light prank. Greg. Hey, Joe. How you doing? Is everything still all right? <laughs> God, life is fun. Is he is he still unsuspecting? He's got an electrician coming out today. <laughs> yeah, but that. But but you gotta understand, Joe. It 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 has cost me something because upon hearing this uh, last night, yeah. <laughs> I, I knew it was gonna be caught if the electrician showed up. Right. So. Did you sneak over? I sat my alarm last night for 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> took, my, took my little flashlight and went over and took everything out. <laughs> and pulled it back far enough away that there's no way in the world he's ever going to find it to the electrician. Oh, this is too good to be true. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, did you ever try the rheostat on him? <laughs> yeah, Joe, we did the rheostat. <laughs> That's why you called the electrician? <laughs> Last night. Yeah? Oh, you have to go with me. <laughs> I've been laughing for 24 hours. <laughs> Last night he gets home. Yep. And... Uh, <laughs> the, light, the lights were on and he, he came out of the barn and... I tried it, and it worked perfect, but he didn't see it because he was walking the opposite direction. Yeah. So I waited for a little while, and he came back out of the house, and as he was walking back towards the barn, I just took and really slowly dimmed them all the way down, but he just, <laughs> just barely on. Then he stopped in his tracks? Stopped dead in his tracks. <laughs> then I stole it. Then slowly pushed him back up so they're on full bright again. <laughs> he walked over to the bar and he's just shaking stuff. <laughs> shaking the lights like crazy with the stick. <laughs> and I slowly dimmed him again. <laughs> then I brought it back up, then I quick shut him off. <laughs> <laughs> He disappeared in the barn for a little bit. Oh. He came back outside. He had his ladder and he sat his ladder up and climbed up there. He was checking his plugs while he was checking his plugs. I had it on. Yeah. When he got to the last one, when he connected it back up and I saw it come on, then I slowly dimmed him again. The guy's going to shoot you. <laughs> <laughs> So he gets off the ladder. <laughs> when he gets down on the ground, oh. I turn it back on again, and he takes his ladder and he throws it on the ground. <laughs> he goes stomping off into the house, and my phone rings. It's him. <laughs> it's him. And it's not on the caller ID, but I was laughing so hard I couldn't answer the phone. Oh. So I let the answer machine answer it. <laughs> Soon as you get this message, call me. I don't know what's going on with my wife. <laughs> You're not going to believe what they're doing now. Oh. And then, if, you know, a few choice words. And <laughs> hung up. Oh, my God. So I, I get my composure and I call him back. And I can't really say what he said, but I was <laughs> he's telling me what his lights are doing. I said, well, I'm looking outside right now. They look fine to me. He says, yeah, but every single time I, I seem to go outside. Now, last night, they weren't fine after, we, you know, we went over worked on them. I thought we had it fixed. Yeah. He said, but when I go out now, he says, now they're doing the damnedest thing. <laughs> they dim all the way down. <laughs> then, they, then they slowly come back up. Oh, my God. This is the greatest. I said, well. I don't I don't know what the problem is, but I got another call. I'll call you back after bed. <laughs> As I was starting to laugh, I couldn't stand. <laughs> so <laughs> I went, <laughs> went back outside, <laughs> and he's watching it. I'm just doing it back and forth. Uh, oh my God! It down, and I'm pushing it up. I got it. The rheostat I got is a little slide switch. It's just perfect. Yeah. So, 
I pushed the switch on, and so I bought the arm, so I quick jumped to my car, and I drove over to see him. Mm-hmm. I said, well, what's going on? So he begins to tell me, and he <laughs> cussing and swearing at the bar, <laughs> cussing and swearing at the lights. His wife's outside, his kids are outside. Oh. <laughs> He's trying to explain what's going on, and he's throwing his arms here and there. Finally, him and his wife decide, okay, that's it. I'm calling my buddy, the electrician, and have him come out tomorrow and take a look. Oh, God. Figure out what's wrong. So and, of course, thought, oh, nothing, no. nothing will be wrong. I'm in trouble now. Right. So, 30 Years of Garage Logic is brought to you by North American Banking Company, a better banking experience. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. To learn more, go to nabankco.com. Join us all summer long as we look back at 30 years of GL memories. Yes, sir. Yes, clean up. This guy wears many hats, just not indoors. Joe Suchere. In other news, national and international news, Donald Trump and 18 allies indicted by a grand jury in Georgia last night. Here's today's Donald Trump indictment. (laughs) I did see a cartoon that had uh, days to indict, or or indictments today, something like that. It was a zero. I got you. Yeah. Like a, mil- a millennium you, clock? You, you know what I'm saying. Yes, thank you, Rook. Uh, they were indicted last night over their efforts to overturn his 2020 election loss in the state with prosecutors using a statute normally associated with mobsters, RICO statute, to accuse the former president, lawyers, and other aides of a criminal enterprise to keep him in power. It was a nearly 100-page indictment detailing dozens of acts by Trump or his allies to undo his defeat. Uh, Other defendants include former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows, Trump attorney and former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani, uh, Trump Administration Justice Department official Jeffrey Clark, uh, Willis, uh, who uh, is the uh, DA, uh, DA handling all this, said the defendants would be permitted to voluntarily surrender by noon, August 25th. She also said she plans to seek a trial date within 20, uh, within six months, excuse me, and that she intends to try the defendants collectively. Okay, so Trump comes to you for a job. He goes to a big bank. He wants a job. Okay. Are you going to hire a guy with four different indictments against him no. who's awaiting trials? I'm not. I'm not. I mean, you get, is he going to get the job? I would think not. No, but he's got a 49% in a poll I just saw. Which I don't understand. I, but I, I, he's I have not, that story next. Such, he's not working on updating his resume. It's That's what I was just going to say. pals helping pals out. And mm-hmm. It's like a mafia job. You don't even have to show up. If we're going to go down that road, who the hell would you hire that held office? Of well, no, I'm saying there if Trump go. was a private citizen and went in for a job application and and they discovered oh. all of these indictments, right. you think he's going to get hired? Well, of course not. All right. But then how can he be? You, when you elect a president, you're basically hiring now, a guy. Now, what do you do? You put the indictments on your resume or do you leave them off? <laughs> I think, you leave <laughs> I think his are I think his are very well known. But if he was a, OK, be, I'll go down this road then. If he was a private citizen, none of these indictments would have you know, this wouldn't be happening. Well. He's right. If Trump wasn't Trump, this wouldn't be happening. Mm-hmm. Chew well, on that. Done. Are we on a break? No. In, okay. early, in early Republican presidential polling, a bit of a surprise, mm-hmm. former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie has surpassed Florida Governor Ron DeSantis in New Hampshire in the new Emerson College survey released today. Christie leapfrogged DeSantis for a second place in the Granite State, garnering 9% support. DeSantis, uh, his he was at 17% in March. He fell to 8%. Uh, both are far behind the fellow we were just talking about there, Donald Trump, who was at 49% in that poll. A debate of GOP candidates is up next week. Uh, August 23rd. We still don't know if Donald Trump will take part. If he does take part, you guys were talking about the resume. My guess is the resume would probably come up in that debate. (laughs) I would assume. Christopher Clark, the senior lawyer representing Hunter Biden, is seeking to withdraw from the case involving the U.S. president's son on the grounds. He'll probably be called to testify. 
Biden facing tax and gun charges may be headed for a criminal trial. U.S. Special Counsel David Weiss said last Friday after being appointed to the post. Weiss said uh, parties in the case were at an impasse in plea negotiations over the tax charges and a proposed diversion agreement on the firearm charge that would allow Biden to avoid prison time or a criminal conviction at cases being heard in the U.S. state of Delaware, where Biden is represented by the Berger Harris law firm. Speaking of our president, um, John, do you, are, do you have anything from Maui coming up in your newscast? I don't actually today. So yesterday at 528, the president said we are laser focused on getting aid to survivors, including critical needs assistance. Listen to this. A one time $700 payment per household offering relief during an unimaginably difficult time. Seven hundred dollars. You just your your everything you own was just destroyed, and we're gonna. Oh, don't worry, we got you covered here. Mm-hmm. We're not outraged by this. Who's I, offering that? that? That'd be your president. Uh, to the people of Maui. Yes. Seven hundred bucks. Right. That ain't gonna do it. I'm I'm gonna need all that. Here's what I want to know: on an island it. that isn't that big, where do you put all that debris? Well, you throw it out in the ocean. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Let the tide take care of it. 2,700 structures were destroyed in Lahaina, Lahaina, uh, Lahaina. valued at approximately $5.6 billion. President Joe Biden, with over $115 billion sent to Ukraine, offers $1.9 million to that community. The problem I read today was the folks who are there can't get out because they don't have any access to gas, et cetera. Uh, so they don't know where to go. A lot of people whose houses were destroyed. There's nowhere so, for them to go. Yeah, they, they and they can't get out. They See, can't. it's an island. Where do you go? Right. <laughs> they don't. They don't have cars. They don't have gas. They don't have after the fires. So, where anyway. do you put all the junk? It's a volcano. Okay, you throw it in there. You get a big barge. I don't know what you're going to do. We dig a hole. That's how we get rid of our our s. We dig a hole. Maybe that's how they do it. Yeah. You have to do it out of sight from the road though, because the nosy noses will uh, drive by and then turn you in. They see you burying buildings and stuff. I think you burying a raccoon carcass is a little different than <laughs> these people over there trying to uh, oh, uh, bury wow. a whole town. Oh, is it, Joe? Yeah. Is it? It's Just not analogous. It's not analogous it's at different. all. Oh, it's totally different. Americans increased their purchases the at retail. Same damn thing. You know it. At retailers last month for clothing, dining out, online goods, and other areas, and a sign that solid consumer spending is still powering the resilient U.S. economy. Retail sales rose a better than expected at 0.7%. They had expected 0.3%. Analysts noted that spending on Amazon Prime Day, the online juggernaut's big two-day sales event that took place earlier last month, helped boost online sales. Excluding autos and gas, sales rose a solid 1%, according to the experts. A Closely watched category of retail sales that excludes auto dealers, gas stations, and building materials and feeds into the gross domestic product jumped 1% last month compared to the prior month, the biggest move in six months. I just paid $389 for the cheapest grade. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah. Is. Yep. What's going on? Talk to your president. It's under four. It's his fault. Mm-hmm. <laughs> A weird and disturbing story involving Baseball Hall of Famer Dennis Eckersley's family. Uh Uh-oh. Uh, Yeah, I hadn't heard about this earlier, but a 45-year-old New Hampshire man will spend at least a year in jail after endangering the life of a newborn baby after Major League Baseball Hall of Fame pitcher Dennis Eckersley's daughter gave birth in the woods last year during sub-freezing temperatures. What? Yeah, yeah. George, you got all that? Yeah. That's too much. George Thierberg was sentenced on Monday after pleading guilty to the misdemeanor child endangerment charge, having reached a deal with prosecutors, plus an additional six months behind bars for a probation violation stemming from an arrest on a drug charge. The baby boy was left alone in a tent for more than an hour on December 26th as temps dropped to 15 degrees. A police affidavit referred to Thierberg as the boyfriend of the baby's mother. Alexandria Eckersley, who was accused of abandoning her son without heat or proper clothing. She pleaded not guilty to charges of assault, reckless conduct, and other counts. She awaits trial next year. Eckersley's lawyer said her client didn't know she was pregnant, gave birth alone, called 911, and led police to the baby. 
She said Eckersley suffered medical complications. Since then, she said Eckersley's finished rehab programs is sober and sees her son on regular visits. The Eckersley family released a statement at the time of her arrest saying they had no prior knowledge of Alexandria's pregnancy. Dennis Eckersley, drafted by Cleveland as a California high schooler in 1972, went on to be a 24-year veteran, ended up being a Hall of Famer, being uh, both a 20-win starter at one point in his career and a 50-save reliever. Wasn't he with Oakland for a while? Yes. Yeah. He was, yes. Uh, and then Boston. Mm-hmm. Yep. Those, Cle- there Cleveland. only two teams? Is that when Pat had a crush Cleveland. on him? Cubs. He played for the Cubs. He did? Yeah. Was that when Royce had a crush on him? Yes. Didn't Jeff yeah, Foxworthy Fergus. or Bill Engvill, <clears throat> excuse me, they had a routine about girls that don't know they're pregnant? That's a redneck thing. I don't know right? that. I don't know. Might that be. Eckersley family must have some some issues. Well, there was. It, that's what I was going to bring up. They they have had issues in yeah, the past. Yeah. 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 It appears from, uh, if you look at the pictures and read the story, uh, they may have been living in that uh, in the woods. Is this, and he, this yeah. West Virginia? Yeah. Where was this? Maine, was it, John? Maine? Um, no, you said the state. Did I say Maine? Uh, it was New England, I thought. Uh, New Hampshire. Uh, well, the man, the man know, is like, from New close Hampshire. Enough. Yeah. Close enough. Close enough. Huh. John, thank you. Yep. Among our many clients I saw last night at Chan Hazard was Tim Bloom. Okay. From I saw him. EcoFun. And Tim deserves every accolade we can throw his way because... We didn't have a seat for Tim. He said, well, you know what? And he was so diplomatic about it. He said there's been a a bit of a kerfuffle with the tickets. Right. And he got in. He couldn't have been nicer about it. We finally got him seated. But, yeah. Would Would he eat in the kitchen? Tim's Tim has <laughs> practically been with us from the beginning. It's like when you're on an airplane, you have to sit at the galley. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Tim with EcoFun Motorsports in uh, Forest Lake in Burnsville with all of the great selection of electric bikes and a great big parking lot at the Forest Lake store to check them out and you wouldn't leave with the wrong bike. I just got a nice note from somebody who was telling me about the pleasant Sunday drive they had on their EcoFun Bintelli e-bike also in burnsville on the uh, service road of life near county road 42 the uh, i hope the weekend went well they had the big uh, gathering down in burnsville they have all the scooters that turn urban errands into adventures youth recreational equipment helmets and apparels the greatest e-bikes in the country with the greatest e-bike people vanderhall uh, roadsters yamaha snowmobiles if you want to get an early start and put some dough down on a Yamaha snowmobile. They've got 15 new 2024 Yamaha snowmobiles for this winter, and they're taking deposits daily. Perfect. In Forest Lake, EcoFun is immediately west of 35, and in Forest Lake, EcoFun is on the uh, service road right above, uh, is it above 35? No, it's think. just east of 35W. Yeah, yeah, right near the, uh, there's a there's a place there. What am I thinking of? There's a uh, Pawn America there. There's it's a, right near there. You yes. can see it from the freeway. Yeah, right. you can see it. It's ecofunmotorsports.com. What happened at that age? Yeah. <laughs> you cannot stop him. He'll just make a move. Joe Suchere. You know, I didn't get the chance to say hi to Mike and all of the great people at North American Banking Company last night, who, by the way, have been proud sponsors of 30 years of Garage Logic with all of the bits we've been doing um, these last, what, two weeks, three weeks? How long have we been doing this, yeah, Russ? We started it in August. So, so two weeks? Wait, this no, is this August. Is August. Yeah, we started August 1st, so and it's, it's August 15th. Two, three, four, anyway, Two North weeks. American Banking Company is here, and they get that you have no shortage of banking options in the Twin Cities. So they're just saying, hey, just come in, check us out, and see if you like us. I did. I made the switch a couple of weeks ago, and my location is in Roseville. But they can also serve you at 50th in France, Hastings, Woodbury, Shoreview, and, of course, their new location over there in Maple Grove. And they're great. They offer the same online and mobile banking options as the other banks, but with the unparalleled service of a community bank. They first opened back in 1998, and they made a promise to deliver a better banking experience for their customers 
where you know your banker and they know you. Well, a lot has changed since then. This commitment to being a true community bank in the Twin Cities, that has not. And here's the deal. They're locally owned and operated. And that's huge because that means loan decisions are made right here in the Twin Cities. And this helps business owners solve problems and expand their business with confidence. So check out their website today. It's nabankco.com. That's nabankco.com. North American Banking Company member FDIC is an equal housing lender. Joe? John, on this day in history, I'll get to Minnesota in a moment, but on this day in history, Woodstock kicked off. Okay. August 15th, 1969. Yes. John Height, what what was its official name? Oh, gosh. Something about something, peace and love. No, Woodstock Music and Art Fair. Art Fair, yep. yeah. Right. Name yep. one of the four fellows who dreamed it up. Just one. I'll take one name. Party Lang. One. Well, no, you were so close. Something else, Lang. Mike, Michael Lang. Yeah, Michael, Michael Lang. Oh uh, yeah, and Artie Cornfeld. Okay, uh-huh. Artie Lang is the comedian <laughs> yeah. from yes. uh, New York. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who was the scheduled opening act that got caught in traffic and was not able to perform? And as a result. Who was the opening act? The opening act was Richie Havens. Right, but who was supposed to who be? Who was supposed to open? Boy, I should You know can't that. be on your computer for this. Uh, I'm, I'm not. I am, I'm not. so I'm keeping my mouth shut. Sweetwater. Oh. I don't know Sweetwater. Sweetwater got stuck in traffic. As a result, Richie Havens and his two acoustic backup musicians appeared first. I bet and that would have changed freedom. the course of their career. It probably would have, yeah. Wow. Because I haven't heard of them either. Who, who were they? Yeah, I know. Uh, that's why they? when we do events, you always leave early. You don't want to get caught in traffic. It was also yeah, called, <laughs> in addition to the Woodstock Music and Art Fair, its subtitle was An Aquarian Experience, Three Days of Peace and Music. Huh. And it turned out to be just hell on earth with mud and storms and 400,000 people. Nine months later. And... So at 5.07, Richie Havens was moved up to the opening performance slot after Sweetwater were stopped by police en route to the festival and other artists were delayed on the freeway. That's when they turned to helicopters. Yeah, and then uh, somebody gave an opening speech invocation, Swami, whoever. Sweetwater was not listed as playing 7.30 to 8.00. Uh, Bert Summer received the festival's first standing ovation after his performance of Simon and Garfunkel's America. Hmm. How, many bands have, pump, how many bands performed? Oh, total? Quite a few. Have you been there? I have. So have I. I have. Uh, Six the first night. I can tell you who. Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin, The Grateful Dead, Jefferson Airplane, Joan Baez, Arlo Guthrie, Santana, The Who, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, Creedence, Clearwater, Joe Cocker, Blood, Sweat & Tears. Jim, I said Jimi Hendrix, didn't I? Yes. Yeah. 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 Sweetwater did not uh, go on to anything, although they did release three albums, 1968, 1970, 1971. Well, they were right in that wheelhouse. You know then. who else yeah, appeared? they were, yeah. You know who else appeared? I'm a farmer. Max Yasger. Yes, sir. Max Yasger. Who's Sean on Is that Bowser? Yep. Yeah, Bowser. They were there. Yep. Yeah. They were Henry there. Gross was their guitar player. Only because Sorry, they come yeah. to us and wow. we're, we're moving. Uh, they're now in Trondheim, Norway. The traveling Lymans are in Trondheim, Norway on this day. Joe, today is August 15th. In night in 1875, on this day, Bishop Thomas Grace dedicated the Church of St. Michael in Stillwater with Father John Ireland presiding. The press of the day acclaimed it as the first church in the state. On this day, 815. In 1933, the Barker Carpus Gang robbed South St. Paul Swift and Company of its thirty thousand dollar payroll. Police officer Leo Pavlak died in the ensuing shootout. And finally, on this day in 2011... You're talking about August 15th? President Obama started a three-day bus tour with a town hall meeting in Cannon Falls. After meeting his motorcade, after the meeting, his motorcade traveled down Highway 52 through Zambroda, Rochester, Chatfield, Fountain, Preston, and Harmony, home of Harmony Spirits on its way to the seed exchange in Decorah, Iowa. Hmm. So there you have it. Can I steal that? Yes. Because I need that for uh, Harmony Spirits later today. All right. During the weekly script. There you go. Mr. Fratelloni. Thank you very much, GLers. 
There's a new way to level up your sports watching experience. Join over a million fans across 33 states who got in the game last year by making picks on Underdog. You can win up to 1,000 times your money just by choosing higher or lower on your favorite player's stats like touchdowns, passing, yards, and more. I find it easy and fun to use while rooting for my favorite players. Making picks on Underdog is straightforward. Signing up even easier. Just head over to Underdog's simple to use mobile app or underdogfantasy.com. Sign up with the promo code GarageLogic and Underdog will give you you a free pick to use on your first cash pick em entry, plus up to $1,000 in bonus cash when you deposit. That's Underdog Fantasy promo code GarageLogic to claim your new customer special of a free pick and your deposit offer. Must be 18 plus, 19 plus in Alabama and Nebraska, 19 plus in Colorado for some games, 21 plus in Massachusetts and Arizona, and present in a state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Void in Colorado. Concerned with your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.ncpgambling.com org in Arizona 1-800 next step 1-800-639-8783 or text next step to 53342 in New York call the 24/7 hope line at 1-877-8 hope ny or text hope ny 467-369 Thanks for coming out last night, GLers. That was fun. That was a blast. And uh, again, that's going to be released at 6 p.m. today, PM. I have been informed. And thank you okay. to all of our sponsors, including North American Banking Company, for sponsoring 30 years of GL. Thanks, Bilski. Nice work. Appreciate it. And it's not done yet. We still got half a month to go. This week concludes the uh, the 30 years celebration period. That is uh, the light rivalry is wrapping her up. Because yes. nothing says August 15th like Christmas light. Well, <laughs> it was one of the biggest highlights yes, ever on the show. So Asked it has about to it be frequently. Uh, pod. Oh, no. We aren't, uh, we're going to. Yeah, you uh, can do pod, man, but YouTube, all of it. It's there. <laughs> subscribe. <laughs> it's not? all over there. Children. Huh? Ready? Are you set? We're not ready for this. We're not done. The show yeah, the know. music I right am. Out. Jeez. <laughs> Wow. Good job. 35 years yes. coming down. Wow. How did we last this long working right. with this guy? It is that time once again that we pick up that phone and we make that call to our guy, Mr. Money Talk. Josh Arnold is with us once again here in Garage Logic. And now is the time for you to do the same. So do not delay. Do what I did and pick up and dial 952 925 5608. That number, once again, is 952 925 5608. You call that number, you get Josh, and you will always get straight talk. You will never get sugar coated advice. And Josh is with us once again here in Garage Logic. And today, Josh, you would like to discuss banks, China, and retail. Banks, China, retail. Correct. The Dow Jones indices and the S&P are down pretty good today, primarily on the backs of very weak China economic data. Now, of course, what is weak in China might be seen as strong in the United States. But in China, all the economic data was down. Retail sales, though up in China, two and a half percent, was below estimates. Industrial production was up 3.7 percent. But that, again, was below or significantly below estimates. Real estate investment in China is down, and that becomes problematic. And there is also a concern about youth unemployment being up. They have a lot of high Highly educated Chinese are unable to get jobs in China as the economy is still trying to recover from their government mandated shutdowns due to COVID. It had been felt that as China opened after the government mandated shutdowns on COVID ended, that China with China's economic growth would follow uh, the United States and uh, possibly Europe and be a big have a big, big boost. Well, they've had the boost, but not as much as he had been expected. I think a lot of that still has to do with very excessive government controls of the economy and particularly of entrepreneurs. China's economic, we'll say, slowdown has had an adverse effect on Chinese-owned companies such as uh, Alibaba, Baidu, JD.com, and their numerous electric vehicle companies. And to some extent, you know, has been seen in the stock performance of a market favorite, uh, Tesla, which has come down a bunch primarily on Tesla's cutting prices of vehicles in China. I'm not a, I love cars, but I'm not a 
car investor, nor am I a bank investor. And banks took another leg down today as one of the credit agencies, Fitch, and we've talked before, there are three credit rating agencies, Standard & Poor's, Moody's, and Fitch. A few weeks ago, Fitch downgraded U.S. debt from AAA to AA+, plus. more, I think, as a warning to the folks in Congress, hey, you're going to have to watch all the spending that's been going on because that is out of control and the interest on the national debt is getting way too high. So be careful there. Fitch had some not kind words to say about the Fed, the current administration, as well as the Republican-led Congress having to do with the upcoming budget discussions. Fitch today downgraded or said they were looking to downgrade banks, including some of the large banks, due to their credit issues. That could put a big damper on the stock market. Again, I am not a bank investor, never have been a bank investor, you know, have steered my clients clear of investing in banks, but they are a segment of the, the market. And then there's retail sales. Well, retail sales for the month of July were up above estimate, and that brought some worries that the Fed is still not done raising interest rates. So to me, yeah, the economy is a lot stronger than people think. I have discussed this previously. I think the Fed is not only out of control with interest rates, I'm not sure they're reading what's actually going on in the economy. That said, retailers are just starting to report. Home Depot had mixed numbers. They beat on the top line, missed, or excuse me, beat on the bottom line, missed on the top line, waiting to hear from Walmart, Target, and TJ Maxx, among others, this week. One side light, one retailer on shoes, market symbol O-N-O-N, was down uh, 11%. They had much better than expected revenues, but their bottom line missed expectations. I think a good part of the miss on the bottom line had to do with currency conversion more so than actual sales. On shoes, just seem to be a hot item. Very good advice, Mr. Money Talk. You heard him, GLers. Now's the time for you to pick up the phone and make the call for that free, yes, I said free, 48-minute financial consultation by dialing 952-925-5608. That number, once again, is 952-925-5608, where you're always going to get straight talk and never, ever sugar-coated advice. Josh, as always, thank you so much for the time and the chat. Have a great rest of your day. We'll talk to you again on Thursday. Thank you. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC, a security investment advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Chris Reavers is a paid endorser.